uh, is there any reason why um, Korean Buddhism calls enlightenment as watching, watching nature? Um, in other words, a uh, Is there any? Mm. There reason? is. It's a wonderful and practical reason. You know, when we hear the word enlightenment, we expect some kind of photon shower that you open your mind's eyes and there's this big bright light or something because it's enlightenment. So we imagine it has something to do with photons or light coming in. Yes, some of the experiences are like that. But some other awakening experiences are very different. They have nothing to do with sound or light or anything that you can later formulate. So, when you sit and you observe nature, that is the experience of something which doesn't come and doesn't go, doesn't move, doesn't change, neither good nor bad, nor high nor low, etc., etc., etc. So, when you observe that, which equals the complete moment experience, then no matter what kind of karma you have, soon it will go away. Soon it will decrease. Soon you see it as created, not as the creator. Soon you see illusion as illusion. So when you rest in the moment and you endure patiently this uncreated, this not becoming mind, then this is the actual experience of your true nature. So when we hear that, it's not just Korean Buddhism, but the origin, Chinese, Chan. Most of these concepts are from that, from Tang Dynasty, or in Korean, Tang Nara. So they gifted us or blessed us with these very clear, very straightforward concepts, which derive as much uh, from Buddhism as from Taoism. So together, they give us very practical insight and not something abstract, something very concrete. So when you sit in a very clear, deep meditation, then this perception of nature, Kyon Song, is an actual experience you can have. That's why they said that. It may just be my illusion, but I feel that um, the Sangha, the people we are close to, uh, we have very similar period of this change. What mm. makes you say that? You know where people are with their individual progress? <laughs> Maybe you gave the interviews, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Do we affect each other's um, this pro process or mm. this progress. change progress? Yes, we actually help each other with that, no matter where we are. That's the point. There is no zenometer, how far you are from your ego and how close you are to enlightenment. That zenometer doesn't exist, fortunately. So, just by being together, eating the same food, practicing the same practice, following the same rules, we help each other tremendously, because this helps us put down our own opinion, our own ignorant views, our own dualistic ideas. And when that happens, we all grow. Alone, it's very hard to do that. Even hermits who practice for a long time, they get back to society, their opinion, boom, come up. They never practiced with each other. Like I said earlier, the notion of progress in Zen is also a little bit reverse to the Western idea. It's not so much observable. It's really like a, an iceberg. And when a warm current comes, the, the iceberg starts to melt from the bottom. And on, on the top, the 10%, which is on the top, is not changing. But the bottom does. So as the warm sea current starts to influence and melt, the iceberg, at some point there's this, this flip and it turns upside down and nobody knows when, nobody knows how. One day it does. So by warming up the sea, by 
practicing together, by creating this space and time and conditions for each other, that's tremendously big help. The fact that we have to coexist and accept each other, that's also fantastic training for everyone. The Sangha, not just this, any Buddhist Sangha has complete structure. That means vertical and horizontal at the same time. So we have certain aspects where we are equal. And that equality satisfies your need for balance, for equanimity, for something where you feel empowered or elevated. Like we all bow to the Buddha three times. We all eat the same food. We all practice in the same room. We are all taken for a sentient being, progressing on the way to awakening and helping others. No exception. But we also have a hierarchy. A hi hierarchy based on seniority, dharma age, uh, position, etc., etc. That hierarchy is just as respected as the equanimity of Buddha nature. So that's why there is harmony a lot more harmony in a Sangha than in some other groups where the ethos is different, where the organizing principles are different. And either it's too equal, becomes too chaotic, or too hierarchical, becomes too tight or unreasonably hi hierarchical. So why I love the Buddhist Sangha? Because it has both aspects. In fact, it has all aspects in harmony. Otherwise, it couldn't exist. And that's what I call the accumulated treasure of our tradition. That's why it's good to practice together. Together action is like, Sungasvim said, like this big bowl of water and the potatoes are in there and they brush off each other as somebody stirs them with a stick. This stirring movement is our joint effort. There is no single hand from above that stirs us. We stir each other. So we clean each other, and that's our wonderful potential. Thank you. You're welcome.